On a college basketball team, there are two separate but equally important groups, those who take the elevator and those who don't. This is their story. We come in the hotel lobby, I think it was after shoot around, and we had a little bit of time between, you know, shoot around and going to pre eat pregame meal. And uh, our guys are all bunched up. It's a small lobby. Elevators are, you know, crammed. I was actually right at the door uh, when I made the decision not to get in the elevator. It was me, it was Kevin Rafferty, it was Dylan Ennis, and we were just kind of, as a couple of the managers, we were just kind of watching, and I saw people get in the elevator, so I told me, like, you know what, that doesn't look too good. It's kind of hot in there, it's a lot of tall bodies. We get on, and JP and Pat, I guess they felt that we could fit two more, so they, Bum rush themselves in, and the door closes. I know they hit four since that's where the dining room was, and then next thing you know, they're on B, which is for basement. Uh, and then I was like, oh God, they're stuck. We're trying to go up to eat meal, and they can't get up there. And then it just took on a life of its own. I'm already claustrophobic myself, and my mom doesn't ride elevators, so I just started like, when I was in high school, I used to never ride them. And so I'm sitting there, of course, I started getting a little hot. I got like a big jacket on, so I started zipping my jacket down. So cooling off, let me just calm down before I just start losing my mind. Next thing you know, a coach bends the corner, and you know, we're all looking at the elevator, and next thing you know, we hear screaming. Everybody's like, stop, stop, stop. You know, of course, you hear screaming, you get worried. And then we realized that screaming was JP. I don't really like tight spaces, and uh, it started getting hot in there. It was about like eight of us in that elevator, so it was a bad experience. Plus. It only dropped like a half a story. <laughs> so it was just like, uh, I gotta get out of here. I don't know if he has some type of, you know, claustrophobic ways, but you could hear JP over everybody else. JP really seemed to be struggling with his situation. Like I said, there was a, a bit of a, JP was struggling with the situation. Javon's yelling, we're gonna die. <laughs> And J Coach is yelling down on, don't worry, Jay, don't worry, Jay. You're, you're on the ground floor. You're going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Coach Ray was like, don't worry, you're not going to die, which is like, oh, death. But like, what? We heard him from outside the elevator. Um, then we heard him from talking on the, you know, on the speaker when we were calling. And it was just a crazy situation. Once you heard what was going on and kind of the dialogue, you know, it was like, okay, they're all right. They are. They're not in the best position, but they're okay. I look one way, I started talking to Darren, I see, uh, turn around, Daniel's on the floor sleeping. The elevator incident? So what's that? You probably don't remember because you were asleep on the floor. Oh. <laughs> oh man, I remember now, I remember. Coach and I went down to the ground level. We finally figured out how we could figure out what's going on, and they had the uh, elevator cameras and whatnot, you know four-way cameras, so we're watching these guys and we were looking, just trying to remember who was on the elevator. We didn't know Daniel was laying on the floor. Some of the things that Daniel was able to do at 6'11", I don't understand. I don't understand how he was able to slouch down and be comfortable enough to fall asleep. I could fall asleep right now if you need me to. Whoever then wasn't on the elevator with us ate all the food, so I was kind of upset about that also. There was no line for anything. That might have been one of our best meals that we had. And it was just like, they had 20 minutes in there and we got done all of our food. We got to have seconds before they got to have any. So I was really happy. After I realized they were all okay. You know, they had uh, fish tacos that day. So, I mean, it worked out perfectly for the guys who didn't get on it. I mean, I was the first one of the food. Um, you might want to call out some sort of sociopathic, remorseless complex, but uh, I didn't feel bad at all. The guacamole was the best guac I think I've ever had. Coach always tells our guys attitude, you know, it's just how you handle it, you know. And, so now we gotta move on. So how we move on? We gotta move on from that. We could say, oh man, we, we, we didn't expect that to happen, which we didn't, and that's messed up. Our guys could make any excuse they want, but it's just like, all right guys, you know what? That's in the past, it's a great memory. Let's keep it as a funny, great memory. You know, nobody, everybody's safe, and let's focus on the next thing, which is Illinois. And, and, and they did a great job of that. And in the end, the Wildcats win it 73-59.